Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Because God resists the proud, because he, he turns his face from the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Let's humble ourselves. Where we consider ourselves low and we consider God as everything. Uh, in Greek mythology, there, there was a renowned Titan named Prometheus. Allegedly, this guy Prometheus, this Titan, had uh, great foresight, great knowledge, allegedly. And he, he, he looked at the gods like Zeus, and, and he looked at him on Olympia, and, and he noticed that they were tyrannical. And so he set out to help mankind on earth and, and he wanted to help their condition and he, he made efforts to change a few things. He, number one, took away their thought of death. That was the first thing he did. Then he, he, he gave mankind a blind hope which would help them accomplish much and then, then he gave them fire. And fire would eventually result in unlimited access to technology. So what happened to Prometheus for all his good deeds? He was banished for eternity. He was chained to a rock where, where an eagle would literally fly down and eat his liver. And every day, in the, in the, in the evening, his, his liver would grow back. And the next day, the the, the eagle would come down and repeat day after day his, his liver being eaten. See, in Prometheus, in, in his pride, he, he tried to ascend to heaven. And he tried to do it through morality. He tried to do it through accomplishment. He tried to do it through, through technology. And they all led to this bad death. Essentially, this story is showing that, that pride doesn't result in a, in a good death. And oftentimes we, we, we think like, man, we're, we're surrounded by talks of death, but, but we often don't think about it. We often don't think about death. And, and I wonder if it's because of our pride. Now, I'm not trying to be morbid because, because when you really think about death, it actually challenges you to like really live. And I'm not trying to be morbid, but, but you, you look at all the, the life stories and, and doctors come and they say, you've got 60 days. What happened to those people that, that say you've only got 60 days to live? You know what happens? They, they start to truly live. You hear about these stories and the, the scriptures confirm it in Psalms 90 verse, verse 12. It says to teach us, God, teach us to number our days that we may apply wisdom. Why? So, so we can, so we can truly live. See, like Prometheus, we, we often think we, we know the way we know how people should live. We, we elevate our way of thinking. And, and really what happens is we try to become our own little gods. We're going to look at a story in the scripture that is infinitely better. Infinitely. It's actually true in the scriptures. And we're going to look at the story of Uzziah. And so let's pray and ask God that he would reveal something in his word. So let's, let's pray right now together. Father, I want to come to you and God, I, I know I'm, I'm nothing without you. I need your help and everybody even watching right now. We, we need your help to see wondrous things in your word. Help us, God, open our eyes to see those wondrous things. And, and we just, we know, and I currently trust in the, the promise of you, you putting us in security. The only place that is secure is, is you. So help us, God. We love you. Amen. If you remember, we're, you should remember probably because we've talked about it a ton. We're in one story is what we're calling. We're reading through the Bible, through the one story plan. You can go to visitgrishchurch.com slash one story. We're on day 205 uh, today or 204. And uh, this message is from day 191. So we're going to be in Second Chronicles chapter 26. So uh, verse three, we're gonna, that's where we're going to kick off the story of Uzziah. So verse three, 
It says Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king and he, he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecholia of Jerusalem. Verse four, it says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. So you got this 16 year old, he shows up in the kingdom. He's, he's 16 and he's got his mom named Jecholia. He's got his, his dad named Amaziah and, and they're all around him. See their names actually, Uzziah, his name means Jehovah is my strength. And then his mom it means Jehovah is able and, and his dad and his dad's name means Jehovah is, is mighty. So at first you look at a 16 year old boy and you go, oh my gosh, he's going to lead the kingdom. But then he's completely surrounded by all these people that, that love God, that are obsessed with God, that are, that are, they've got their eyes focused on God, the, the, not only any God, but the Jehovah God, the, the existing one, the all powerful one, the, the almighty one. And so verse five, he, the story continues, Uzziah, it says that he sought God in the days of Zechariah. So he, he seeks them and Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Uzziah sought the Lord and he, 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 he sought him with care. And he, the, the word actually means that he treaded it frequently. Like he, he stepped in God's presence. He, he, he walked near him. He was in the territory of God. He was going to the well of God and he was drinking from the cool, refreshing water. He was being satisfied by the words of God from the prophets like Zechariah. In truth, he was humble. He's got this spiritual guide and this spiritual guide, Zechariah, is saying, look at God, get a more accurate view of God, get a glimpse of him, hear about him, read about him and, and live. And so Uzziah prospers. And I want to be careful here because prospering is not what we always think it is. It's not some weird bank account where like I do good and then maybe God will do good to me. Because if you remember the next verse, actually, what we'll see is that he was in war. He's still fighting. We set up a false expectation with God. We say things like, oh, I'll give him a little bit. And, and, and when things get hard, we cry out like, but, but I gave things to you, God. When we lose our jobs or we lose a, a, a baby or we have cancer, we say, we'll follow until these hard things start happening to me. Until somebody hurts me in church or until somebody, somebody cheats on me. True prospering is actually progressing in knowing God, loving him, seeking him, obeying him, making efforts to expand his kingdom into all of the earth. See, when you seek God, when you love him, he gives you a foundation where you, you can suffer with joy, where you can be rich or poor where you can be healthy and wealthy and wise or not because we have Christ. Notice what happens next. Verse 26. I'm sorry. Verse six in chapter 26. It says, now he went out. He made war against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jebna and the wall of Ashdod. Now listen to this. Cause then he built cities around Ashdod. And among the Philistines, have you ever noticed when, when you start to prosper walking with God, that war is coming. If war is not already there, when we prosper with the Lord, war seems to, to, to come right at us. At first, this looks really good. He, he's fighting, he's warring against the enemy, right? All these, these people groups that he listed, they, they were enemies of the children of Israel. And that's, that's what Christians do. We, we fight sin. That's what Philistines are a picture of. of they're they're a, a picture of sin and we fight sin. We destroy, we drive it out of the kingdom. But here's our first clue that this story isn't what it seems. Scripture says that he built cities around and among the Philistines. What was he supposed to do to those people? 
See, he was supposed to, he was supposed to drive them out, but instead he's, he's cuddling up. He's getting near. You ever do that with sin? I know that's a, a funny question. You ever cuddle up with sin? You get near it? You place yourself among it? He goes a step further, verse 7. It says, yes, God helped him against the Philistines. So he, he received help from the Lord and then against the uh, Arabians who lived in Gur and Baal and uh, against the Mennonites. And then verse 8, it says, also the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. They brought tribute and then not only did he, they bring tribute, but Uzziah's fame started spreading as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. It seems like there's a turn here, right? He's starting to, tar- starting to make all these things a little bit about himself. And then his enemies are, are bringing tribute to him. Literally, the enemies are coming by and giving donations to him. He's starting to fraternize with the enemy. And his fame and his, his name start, start to be talked about. And, and it says that he became very strong. He started to make everything about him. Am I, am I the only one that struggles with this? You ever make stuff about yourself? Virtually every fight in my life that I've ever had with my wife or kids or anybody has usually been about me preferring me. Right when I when I fight with my wife, it's usually because I'm in preference to what I want. I usually am telling the kids clean up because it's easier for me. It's really I'm about J. Raby. You know what I'm saying? You're probably about insert your name, just like Uzziah was. So Uzziah is still about himself. What he does in verse nine, it says he he builds this tower in Jerusalem. So he builds a tower at the corner gate and the, the valley gate and at the, the buttress of the wall and he fortifies them. So he starts to build these cities and these protections. And verse 10, he even builds towers in the desert. He digs many wells because he had a ton of livestock and he, he, he did it both in the lowlands and in the plains. And he had farmers and vine dressers and mountains and, and, and in Carmel. And then it says this curious phrase, for he loved the soil. Essentially what that section of scripture is saying is that he was really rich. And then to feel protected, he started trusting in his own devices. He, he, he wasn't trusting God anymore. Like where's Zechariah? Where's his, his friends and folks around him? And it says this, this, this curious phrase, for he loved the soil. See right here, I believe that that Uzziah began to love the world and he continued his, pro- her, his protection journey. He was obsessed with, with safety and, and he started using his own devices to protect his little kingdom that he was, he was building. The rest of the, the four verses here, verses 11 through 14, it says he, he, Uzziah goes on and he, he builds an army with 2,600 men of valor with with 300, over 300,000 men that are helping the king fight the enemy, but not too much because then he would lose his, his tribute. He builds spears and shields and helmets and armors and, and bows and slings. Right now, he really seems like a good guy, a good reputation, intelligent. He, he builds lots of things, but then there's all these little markers in his life that are saying, like, pay attention. Something's not quite right. Something is not quite right. The story continues in verse 15. It says, and he made devices in Jerusalem that were invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners and to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame again spreads far and wide and he was marvelously helped. He was marvelously helped until, till he became strong. This is not just any strength. 
See, in in that time, their strength was was supposed to come from God. You look at the whole Old Testament and you hear Exodus 15. It says, the Lord is my strength. Hashtag Moses. Second Samuel 22. It says, God is my strength. Hashtag David. Psalms 19. Again, David says, oh, Lord, my strength. Psalms 27 says, the Lord is my strength. Jehovah is my strength. Jeremiah 16 says, oh, Lord, my strength. Habakkuk. Three says the Lord God is my strength until until we forget God. You ever believe like your own PR? See, this is not just any kind of strength, but this is this is a hideous strength where we start to trust in ourselves. We start to trust in our own devices, in our own thought, in our our own intelligence, and then our our heart is lifted up with pride. Look what, he, well, look what he does in verse 16. It, it continues on talking about his heart. It says, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God, by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. See, something terrible happens from verse 5 to verse 15. He doesn't turn to a false god. He, he, he doesn't turn to some, some weird thing, but he turns to himself. He gives himself the, the duty of a Levitical priest. He goes into the holy place that was reserved for, for certain people. He doesn't take counsel. He doesn't seek out answers, but he, he goes in not to do false worship, but wrong worship. See, he thought he knew better. He thought his way was better. This is the American way, just to, you know, make you mad. This is the American way. The, I can do it on my own. I, I can make my way. It's all about me, myself, and I. That's called pride. So in this story, he goes into the temple and hallelujah, you have verse 17. It says, so Azariah, the priest, he goes in after him and, and not only is it him, but 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. Verse 18, it says, they withstood King Uzziah. And he said to him, it's not, it is not for you, Uzziah. I think often like, how, how would he actually say this? Is it like, oh, hey, uh, it's, it's not for you, Uzziah. No, it's saying it's, it's not for you, Uzziah. It's not for you to, to burn incense to the Lord. It's, it's the priest's job. It's for the, the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. That's, that's why we're here. We're, we're here to worship the Lord and help others worship the Lord. You shouldn't be here taking our spot. And so Uzziah, or, uh, I'm sorry, Azariah says, get out of the sanctuary. Get out. You have trespassed. You have no honor from the Lord God. See, Uzziah had wholeheartedly trusted in himself, in his pride. And, and as Azariah in the 80, they, they show us the way to be valiant. You have somebody over here, Uzziah, that's trusting in his, his own heart, his own way, his own thought. And he's lifted up. But then you have these strong men, and they're strong in the right things. They're not strong in the, the wrong things. They knew where their strength came from. And so they come and they confront the king. My question is, where are those men today? Where are the men that stand for truth? Where are the ones that have a foundation of Jesus that stand in the truth and they understand their roles and they understand that there are distinctions in the church and, and although there's unity among these distinctions, that's what makes the world actually beautiful is all of this diversity, but there's unity in the midst of diversity. See, Uzziah understood this at one time. He, he understood he treaded near the glory of God. He was in God's territory, and now he is stomping on God's glory. Essentially, he's putting himself in the place of God, and he's lifted up with pride. See, he learned this from somebody. 
for parents or disciples. Listen to this. This is, this is exactly what his dad did. In the, in the chapter before, you see his dad, Amaziah, turn away from following the Lord just like Uzziah did. When you begin to elevate yourself, when your heart gets lifted up with pride, that's what pride is, elevation, arrogance, majesty, puffed up about yourself. You start looking down on others, you're in the danger zone. I'll never forget when, when uh, I became a Christian, I went to this small church down in Springfield, uh, Missouri, and, and we started this, this ministry for addicts. And so uh, I, I remember they would do it usually on Wednesday nights and, and you know, addicts, they're, they're smoking cigarettes. And so at least they're not doing meth. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we probably should cut that part out of the video, but y- you get what I'm saying. Uh, so they're, they're smoking cigarettes. And so as you walked into the church, there were hundreds of cigarette butts all over and there were church members that came in and they were getting so angry and so, so mad where, where these addicts are hearing the message of Jesus. They're experiencing Christ. They're, they're coming to faith. They're getting saved. But all of these folks are, are mad because they started elevating themselves above those addicts. I, I remember I, instead of uh, me blaming church members, I'm going to blame myself now. Uh, it's that same church, I remember I, I left and I, uh, apparently all my stories are around cigarettes and cigarette butts. I don't know why, but, but I, I was driving and I, I stopped at this gas station right next to the church. And I'll never forget, I, I saw this pregnant lady. She's walking down into the gas station. Before she gets in, she, she's smoking a cigarette. A pregnant woman smoking a cigarette. And right at that time, uh, my wife and I, we were really all about sharing the gospel. Uh, we, not much has changed. <laughs> not much has changed. We're just sharing the gospel with people. And I saw and I was like, oh, man, you know what? Gosh, I'm not going to share with her. And then I had this self-reflective moment where I went, hold on. Am I better than her? Yeah. I, I thought because I had the truth, because I had Jesus, because I had everything that, that I was above her, that I was better than her. Eventually I did submit and I walked over and I, I told her about Christ. I wish I could say like, yeah, she bowed the knee and she confessed and she said, yes, Jesus is the Lord. I, I repent, but that's not what happened. But I did become lower that day. Where Uzziah went into the temple, what he forgot is that there was a, a priest. There was a priest, and he had a specific job that he was supposed to do, and he was taking his job. There's this amazing New Testament principle that, that, that there, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the high priest where now, unlike Uzziah, we can go into the temple. We have access to the king of kings. We have access to God. I'm not the mediator. I'm here to constantly challenge you, constantly push you to get in the word, to spend time with the mediator, with his word, with the people of God. Because you have access to the source of life. You have access to the source of joy. Go and and, and be with him. But that's not not what Uzziah does. The priests come and they, they confront. And when they confront, verse 19, it says, Then Uzziah became furious. And he had a censer in his hand to to, to burn incense. And, And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead. And before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense at the altar, this, this, this leprosy breaks out on him. It goes on to say that, yes, he was leprous, and they actually thrust him out of the temple. And it says, indeed, he also hurried out because the Lord has struck him. See, sin, oh, sin will find you out. You know, in our current cultural context, there is going to be a day where when you see somebody in a building and that building is burning down and and you tell them the truth, you cry out and you say, the building's on fire. 
Like you're going to die if, if you don't get out. You're going to get taken. You're going to get taken to jail for hate speech. They'll say you were too offensive to me. You will, you will cry and you, you will say, I was trying to save your life. Get out of that building. Get out because it's burning down. I'm here to offer you infinite joy and life, but you want to stay where you are. That's what pride is. It's arrogance. It's, it's adornment. It's haughtiness. It's being puffed up. It's, it's rising up. It's thinking you're, you're better. You know how God feels about pride? Scripture says that he hates it. And not only does he hate it, but he has a burning hatred towards it. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 5, this instruction, it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, in fact, all of you be submissive one to another and be clothed with humility where you consider yourself low for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. Like that, that should be terrifying. It should be scary. We, we don't see pride as a, as a big deal. Sometimes we even celebrate it. But God doesn't take it lightly. Or my, my son Silas, when, when he was younger, he, he went to uh, what was called Sunday school and he watched this video it may have been about Uzziah, or it may have been about uh, when Jesus touched the leper and, and healed him. But, but I'll never forget, Silas watches this, and then he got sick in the evening. And when my, when, when, when my son gets sick, he gets a fever, he starts acting real weird. And, and so he woke up in the middle of the night, and he was terrified about this king that had leprosy. And so we always, make, uh, we always joke around with him because he... He, he woke up and he went, uh, leprosy, le leprosy, le leprosy. He was terrified of it. And that's the way we should be with sin. That's the way we should be with sin. Sin is a picture uh, of leprosy. Leprosy is a picture of sin. And we should be terrified of it. Not so much so that we're going to huddle up in a corner, but where we can say, I hate it. I hate pride. I despise it. In fact, I despise it so much that I will obey 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, when it says, therefore, because God resists the proud, because he, he turns his face from the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So in our own admission, with our own effort, let's humble ourselves, where we consider ourselves low, and we consider God as everything. The terrifying reality is that, yes, God does resist the proud, the people that appear above others, the ones that overestimate our means or our merit. And over and over and over again, God says that he's against it. God resists the proud. See, mankind has this insatiable desire to be significant. I always il illustrate it with the, the fact of the wa movies we watch. You know that indie flick? You know the indie one, the little uh, you know independent filmmaker? Nobody watches that. Nobody watches it. You know what we watch? Movies about heroes. Marvel movies. Why? Or, or even these uh, grand epics like, like Harry Potter or... Hunger Games or, or The Matrix, because they we're all looking at these people and they're special and they're significant and, and everybody's proclaiming that, oh, that person's unique and, and, and special. And the truth is the majority of our lives are ordinary, doing mundane things. But when you get a glimpse of who Christ is, when you see him for who he really is, your life is no longer mundane but you begin to see Christ everywhere where we're, we're not proud any longer. We're not hindered from life and love and joy. See, pride cuts us off from all those things. That's what it says about Uzziah in verse 21. It says, King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house because he was a leper. He was cut off from the house of the Lord. 
doesn't sin just cut us off? It cuts us off. And not only was he a leper for, for the rest of his life, he was known for the rest of his life and throughout history as, as a leopard. See, Uzziah, he, he got close to sin. He, he loved the world. He trusted himself. He, he, he stomped on the glory of God in the, in the temple. He, he was eventually isolated and he didn't listen to, to godly counsel. And that's what pride does. It isolates. It, it kills community. It, it kills humility. It, it destroys fellowship with God. But where is the hope in all this story? Like, where is the, the hope? Where, where is God found in this downward spiral? Look at, the, look at the last verse for me. It says, So Uzziah rested with his fathers, and they, they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial, which belonged to the kings. Okay, he was buried. For they said, he is a leper, right? After his death, he was still known as a leper. But then Jotham... His son reigned in his place. Uzziah's son. You know what Uzziah's son's name means? Jehovah is perfect. See, we all need the son that is perfect. We all need the son that, that, that is perfect. And he can be ours. And more correctly, we can be his. And, and yes, Uzziah serves as this is example. Sorry, Uzziah serves as an example that sin leads to destruction. But we need the son that will reign. We need the son that, that will proclaim Jehovah is, is perfect. And so the question for us is, do you have the son that is perfect? Eventually, modern science would find out that, that leprosy was fairly harmless. Right? Sin seemed to be fairly harmless, but untreated. If left untreated, the nerve damage would result in crippling hands and feet, paralysis and blindness. It's no different with sin. Sin will lead you to destruction. And so how do I beat these things out? How do I, how do I actually fight? And sometimes I bet, I remember there, there was a time in my life when I thought I only needed the gospel like one day. And it was when I got saved. But we need the Son. We need Jesus Christ, the Son, every day, day by day by day. I need the Son today. And Uzziah show, shares with us the antithesis of what we should be doing. See, at first he made war with the enemy. And so for us, we should kill sin. i got five things for you. Kill sin. Destroy it. And don't do it alone, right? He had community. He didn't have just any community. He had 2,600 men of valor. 2,600 men that were reminding him of the truth. Then... Don't be like Uzziah and confess. Your sin is going to find you out. So just confess now. Confess your sin now. And then Uzziah had this prophet that he left. Would you go and find the words of the prophet in the thing that's called the Bible and find life? Go to the Word. And then search him out. Not Uzziah. God. Like seek him out. And seeking is this, this lifelong journey. And there's roadblocks all along the way. And there's opportunities to, yes, cuddle up to the word, to the world. We begin to, to love what the world allegedly has to offer. We start to trust in our own prosperity, our own ways of, of doing things. We, we begin to think that we don't need others. If you've never thought that, just look at the guy next to you. Because he has definitely thought it. And our, our society is becoming less communal. And it, it's not natural for, for men to be friends with other men anymore. And it's not, it's not natural for women because they're, they're afraid if they've got community, the, the comparison game will, will show up. And in an era where everyone has this facade of, of connection and everyone is starving for it and, and we've believed the social media lie that it's actually social, Jesus has showed us a way. He showed us that He is the way. 
He showed us that He's gentle and lowly and loves when it doesn't make sense. He showed us how to lead in true humility. He's called us to abide in Him so we don't try to do things alone. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. The scripture goes on to say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Do you remember what it feels like? Do you remember what it feels like to, to be rescued, to be called, to be known by God, to be forgiven, to be purchased, to be justified, to be secure, to be on mission? Do you remember what it's like to, to be loved, to be eventually glorified one day, to be counted as righteous? Do you remember what it means to be set apart or to be in fellowship with others and Him and to, to be happy? Do you remember what it's like to have hope? It's only found in one way, unlike Prometheus in, in our own way, the only way is found through Christ and looking forward to a good death. You know, if you're not there, let me share. Remember, Zechariah was the prophet at the time, and, and Zechariah had this message for all of Israel and for Uzziah, and this is what he said. He says, thus says the Lord, return to me, return to me, and I will return to you. So on one hand, what, is it, what does this mean if you're a follower of Christ? It means we gotta root out pride. I give you five ways. We gotta work, we gotta root out pride with the word, with prayer, with community, with confession. We kill sin with those things. And then we plead with others to follow Christ, to love him. And what does this mean for the non-follower? Maybe you're here and you're, you're listening or you're watching and you're not a follower. The question for you is, do you have the perfect son? Is Christ ruling and reigning in your life? The secret about this whole story is, is, is showing Christ in God's extravagant grace. You know who was eventually found in the lineage of Jesus? Uzziah, Uzziah. Scripture says, while we were yet sinners, still in our rebellion, Christ died for us. So the question is, do you have the Son? Thanks so much for engaging with us this weekend. We hope that you were encouraged and that you were challenged by this week's message. We hope it doesn't stop here. We hope that you jump into your Bible throughout the week and spend time with the Lord. You can join us in one story. You can download the app or you can go to our website, visitgracechurch.com slash one story to get updates on where we're at. We hope that you will invite someone by sharing this post or by having them over to watch with you at your house. We hope you have a wonderful week. We love you and we'll see you next week. Oh, I'll step in the water, knowing your heart.